good morning class today we begin with a very simple topic that is textile fibers that is the different type of fibers that we use in our daily life some of them are natural and some of them are man made the ones which are natural may be either from the source may be either from vegetable source or it could be from animals too so what we find is that from primitive times from olden days man used leaves barks of skin to meet the basic needs that is how to protect himself from the weather different weather conditions and over the years what we find is that he has been able to develop fibers from nature and each one possesses a different quality so we can say a textile fiber can be called a body that is very long in relation to its thickness it consists of cells arranged in its longitudinal direction now if you ever cut a cloth with a scissor you will always find that you must cut it lengthwise and not breadthwise because then we will be cutting the fiber in the middle so what we find is that the broad if we do a broad classification of fibers we do this classification on the basis of physical shape density color luster moisture regain elastic recovery thermal behavior resistance to chemicals resistance to microorganisms based on this we have classified the different fibers out of which first we begin with the natural fibers these are the vegetable fibers that we use generally are cotton flax and linen and the animal fibers that is used by us are silk and wool and so let's first finish this then we come to the man made fibers so we've noticed that this natural fiber cotton which is a vegetable which is got from plants contains 90% cellulose because as you know all plant cells have an outer covering of cellulose and 10% mineral salts wax and pectin and we find that this has been used in india since olden days that is since from the time of mohenjodaro then from india it moved to egypt brazil africa and to the other countries of the world and we find that cotton is mainly used because it is cheap to produce and has a tremendous range of application clothes that is we use it to make towels bed linen undergarments home textiles etc so if we quickly look at the physical properties of cotton we find that they are mostly cylindrical fibers they vary in color that is white to cream it wrinkles very easily so it absorbs as it absorbs a fair amount of moisture hence cotton absorbs perspiration hence it is worn in places where it is warm then especially during the summer months it has low elasticity shrink resistant because it has a tendency to shrink so it before they make it into a textile fiber they see that it is made shrink resistant they are strong 25% stronger when wet thermal properties is it's a good conductor of heat it can withstand high temperature it can be boiled in water it gets scorched with hot ironing chemical 
properties are it is not affected by mild alkalis so most soaps and detergents can be used to wash it hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid definitely will weaken the fiber hard water has a tendency to discolor the fiber so this and so these are the most of the things that we find and it's easily eaten up by mildew and silverfish affected by it quickly let's look at the next fiber that is silk which is a natural fiber but is got from an animal source it is has a beautiful look fine texture and was first discovered by the chinese and we find that it is got from the cocoon that is the silk worm which lives on mulberry trees it is got from the cocoon of the mulberry trees and from there they take out the threads and then make it into a fiber and it has been found that in india too during olden days that is during the time of ram and sita they wore silk sarees it is mainly a cultivated fiber huh? that is from the silk worm which lives which likes to go grow on mulberry silk or wild silk is also got which grows on non mulberry silk so these what we find it is a protein fiber and the silk fiber is rod shaped and it appears rough and irregular due to the presence of gum it is uneven and dark when when compared to the cultivated silk it is sensitive to sunlight and deteriorates the silk quality it is a strong fiber it increases slightly in length when it is wet it is weaker when wet and needs careful handling silk is a good absorbent of water this makes silk suitable for dyes and finishes it is lesser affinity for dyes than cultivated silk and it is a warm fabric that's why it's generally worn in winters because it keep, it because it helps us helps to keep us warm if you look at the thermal pop properties silk burns easily but can be extinguished after being removed from fire it is a poor conductor of heat that is heat loss is less <coughs> hence it keeps the body warm it stretches with ironing it scorches easily in contact with hot iron it gets damaged by alkalis it gets dissolved in hot caustic soda then mineral acids bring about contraction and discoloration of the fiber silk fiber mild bleach hydrogen peroxide can be used to remove any stains on it next we move on to another animal fiber that is wool wool is a natural fiber but protein in nature what we find is that it is generally used in the cold countries and in india too we find that people living in the northern part of india use a lot of wool and it is got mainly from the body of the pure wool is got mainly from the body of the sheep that is it is the fleece or the outer covering of the body of a sheep in areas where temperatures relatively warm through the year the sheep may be red and then we find that it's outer layer the of the sheep that is the wool is just taken off from its body it's pulled out it is a protein fiber and it it crimps similar to the curl in human hair the crimp increases elasticity of the fiber and holds holds air thus provides better heat insulation it is a poor conductor of heat elasticity reduces the wrinkling part of it wool what what we find is that has been classified in different ways meaning the different type of animals which give us wool like from example in australia we have the merino sheep that gives us wool and hair from camel goat and angora rabbits are also used for making woolen fibers so and wool we find has a certain degree of luster that is a shine or from almost silky to coarse and dull and we find that it absorbs a lot of moisture 30% of its weight 
The wool liberates heat to keep the body warm. It has got hydrophobic properties and te tends to give off water and other liquids. They get entangled and when subjected to friction, the tensile strength of wool is fairly low, means it easily breaks. And strong detergents and alkalis should be avoided to wash wool. Then we next move on to man-made fibers. When we talk of man-made fibers, the first one we can see is nylon. Nylon, we find, was developed earlier in 1927 by DuPont Company and it has been synthesized or the longitudinal section of the nylon fiber when viewed under microscope is transparent and it can be made into very sheer transparent and lustrous fabric. It is one of the strongest man-made fibers. It retains a lot of elasticity and strength when wet. Hence, it does not require much attention during washing. It is long and it's a long and strong fiber. And what we find is that it is resistant to perspiration and the thermal properties are that it should be kept away from flame because it is inflammable and nylon should not be washed in hot water because low t it is important to avoid temperature uh, or sunlight when we talk of washing and drying nylon clothes. It is not affected by alkalis. However, all acids have a damaging effect on the fiber. Stain removers and bleaching agents can be used without the fear of much damage. Nylon is resistant to mildew and doesn't need much care. If we don't have to care much for it. It's a polyester. Then we move on next to blended fibers. That is terylene. Again, a man-made fiber. Terylene, what we find is that it's a blended fiber and here what we find that it can be achieved from a single fiber. The characteristics are it is very cost effective, it exhibits better properties as cotton wrinkles but terylene doesn't and we find that it is much more durable or lasts longer than cotton, silk, wool and even insects like moths and moles cannot affect it. Terracotta is also another blended fiber and here what we find is that it is mixed less than five, each fiber is listed like it terracotta will include polyester, cotton and so different combinations of polyester and cotton together helps us to make terry cot or terry wool. Terry wool is that where the quantity of wool is mixed with polyester while in terry cot what we find is that the cotton fibers are mixed with polyester but when we make terry wool we find that we are mixing polyester and wool together then nowadays another man-made fiber has come up which we call as terry silk here silk is blended with polyester so if this is a brief idea about the different natural and man-made fibers out of which we make our daily, which we use in our daily life. Moving on next, we come to yarn making. A yarn, we can say, is made up of a group of fibers which are kept parallel to each other and then twisted to make it into a, dif a different types of cloth. So, 
Here we have simple yarns which are used for the construction of everyday personal and household cloth and clothing. Then we have what you call fancy or novelty yarn which differs significantly in appearance from simple yarn and this gives an interesting look to it. It has got knots, it has got loops, curls all are there in this in this fancy uh, or yarn that we have that is the different designs that we have on many clo clothes that we buy in the market but there is a technique of making these yarns and let us quickly have a look at the different techniques we use one is mechanical spinning Mechanical spinning, what we find is that, is to convert the yarn and in this process, we in olden days, charkas were used and this is generally used to make handmade cloth, like cotton yarn is made from ready fabric, so the cotton, what you call the fibers, are separated from its seeds and then it is cleaned and after it is cleaned, they are laid parallel and drawn into loose rope or silver called puni and then the sliver is wound round the charka and then out of that yarns are woven then after that we move on next to which is the most commonly used in the big textile industries today the method used in the big textile industry is Chemical spinning. Chemical spinning is a process where machines are used and first what we find is this. Wet spinning is done where the polymer is changed to make the fiber soluble and then sometimes dry spinning is done. The basic process here the fiber solution is forced through the spinners into warm air chambers then melt spinning is done where fiber polymer is first melted then emulsion spin spinning is done not very common it's quite a complex process and after the spinning has been completed we come next to the weaving of fabrics so there are different weaves Weaving of fabrics, here what we find is that the different weaves are used, plain weave, it is the most simplest and used in, to make cotton weaves and the fabric is durable with a neat finish. Then we have the twill weave followed by is considered a basic weave technique, satin weave and then of course another one is the knitted weaves like we do make sweaters at home with sweater knitted is knitted with needles and wool in the same manner knitted fabrics are made in machines so these are the different types of weaves after the fiber has been woven we next come to the basic procedure of finishing the fiber fabric finish so there is a procedure of finishing first of all we begin with cleaning the fabric has to be first washed of the dirt natural wax natural nitrogenous substances oils starch etc and this cleaning process includes pre-wash and the fabric you by using detergents which helps to remove the desizing chemicals waxes and foreign materials have to be removed thorough rinsing is essential to wa wash away all wax dirt and the remaining chemicals after the washing procedure is over after cleaning it then it is bleached 
The sun has natural bleaching power which can be used to dry the white clothes after washing and the bleaching can be done either by using a reducing agent or an oxidizing bleach. When we call of reducing bleaching is not lasting because the fabric gets back to its natural color but hydrogen peroxide which is an oxidizing bleach is very good as it helps to and is applicable for all fibers. Then special finishes are done like mercerizing of cotton we hear or we may have seen when we go to buy cotton in the shop that it is a mercerized variety. It is a treatment given to cotton and tredicot or fabrics, man-made fabrics which are blended with cotton where they are thoroughly wet, it's made wet. Then the fabric is saturated with caustic solution for a certain time period and then washed with a neutralizing chemical and rinsed thoroughly. Then shrinkage control is also done which is called as sanforizing. The term sanforizing is used to stop the shrinkage of, uh, of certain fibers mainly containing cellulose that is cotton, flax, jute and coir are sanforized to see that they do not shrink later on after washing. Then many a times waterproofing is also done of the fabric so that water it does not allow water to remain on its surface. After all this is completed then the white fabric is taken for dyeing in different colors. So different color dyes are used and the proper care of the dyed fabric has to be taken else it will discolor and fade. Vegetable dyes can be used and have been used for a long time like indigo leaves, the sunflower, red dye from plant roots, royal purple from shellfish. So in this manner we can use different natural dyes but today what we find is that generally we use the chemical dyes. So fabrics are then dyed by either acid dyes or any other procedure and then after that the plain fabric may be sent for screen printing, screen printing, pigmentation printing, batik, tie and dye. So all this takes place after the, or the fabric has been what you call dyed. So this completes the, comp the procedure of making fibers and how we get it into the form of a cloth. Thank you.